Okay, year nine. So we're on to our next part of the P2 topic, which is forces. Now, forces are very closely connected to motion because without forces, motion can't change. Um, but let's look at forces. Uh, this will be very similar to stuff that you did um, in year seven. Uh, but uh, really, we want to tighten up the way that we draw forces. That's a really important thing. So we need to be able to identify forces, name some forces and draw forces really well in diagrams. So here's a question to start with. Uh, first of all, we'll read this together. Every push or pull on any object is a force. There are several different types of force. How many can you name? So pause this, maybe just on a rough bit of paper, write down how many different forces you can name and then come back in a minute or two. Okay, hopefully you've done that. Now what I'm gonna do is um, ask you now, have a look at these. These might give you a clue to some more. Um, obviously this, this is designed to be used in a classroom, this PowerPoint. Um, so you won't have whiteboards, but just have a have a look at these. Take a minute or two. What different forces do these represent? OK, so uh, A, we've got a weight lifter. So the force could be weight. Uh, B, um, this soldier is thrusting with his spear. So that's thrust. C, we've got smoke from the tyres, that must be friction, I think. And D, um, we've got lightning. Well, that lightning is caused by electrons being pushed through the air, so that's an electrostatic force. I'm going to very briefly run through the names of some common forces. They're all pushes and pulls, and that you should know, uh, you should know all of these um, already, ideally, or if not, be confident in them by the end of the lesson. So weight is the force that pulls mass downwards towards Earth. One kilogram is the mass, 10 newtons is the weight, that is the force. Thrust is any driving force that pushes or pulls an object along. Uh, it tends to be continuous. Up thrust is where objects in fluids are pushed up. All objects um, have some um, up thrust on them if they're in a fluid. So the only objects that don't have up thrust are in space or in a vacuum. Drag is any resistance to objects moving through a fluid. Uh, this cyclist has got a drag chute to increase that resistance, that drag. Um, it could be through water, it could be through air. Air resistance is an example of drag. Lift is an upward force that pushes objects up when they are moving through a fluid. So uh, airplane wings, helicopter blades, and even the hull of a boat will give the object lift as it moves through that fluid. Uh, friction is holding this spoon on this girl's nose. Friction is the resistance to surfaces sliding past each other. We have magnetic forces, and that's the force between magnetic poles. Electrostatic forces are the forces between statically charged objects. Normal reaction forces, well, the word normal means at right angles to in every direction, so it's a bit like the word perpendicular, but it's a bit more three-dimensional than that. And if you push on something, it will push back. So right now, my laptop is on the table, the table is pushing back at 90 degrees to the surface. So that's the normal reaction force. Uh, there isn't the force, unfortunately, for those fans of Star Wars among us. Um, at least not that we know of. Uh, so it's your turn. I would like you to pause this video now. This file is attached and uh, there are bits missing. So all of the information I've just gone through very briefly is summarized in this table. Complete the table using the information at the bottom and uh, stick it in. If you haven't got a printer, that's fine. You can write this all out. Come back when you're done. OK, so uh, these are the answers. Um, if you've managed to write all these out, brilliant. Uh, check your answers and correct them with a purple pen. Pause if you need to, because I'm moving on now. So. 
We can uh, draw forces using arrows. You've done this before. So if we've got a photograph, we can draw the arrows on top of the photograph. And in this case, hot air balloon is just kind of hanging in the air. So it's got equal up thrust and weight. If we do not have a picture, the shape has to be simple. We do not want artwork of hot air balloons. We want nice, simple shapes. So a circle adequately represents a hot air balloon as long as we label it. And we've got the same arrows um, up and down with the size and the direction. We always label the arrows so we know that they represent the particular type of force we're talking about. OK, so um, similar to uh, velocity, forces are a vector. They're similar because they have both direction and magnitude, which is um, the guy called Vector from Despicable Me reminds us. Uh, now, when we draw these arrows, the arrow obviously gives us the direction of the force. But the they also give us the magnitude. The bigger the force, the longer the arrow. And they should ideally be to scale with the force as well. And in fact, this is almost certainly not to scale because the thrust um, on this golf ball, while it's in contact with the club, is much much greater than its weight okay but uh, it's representative so we've got this really long arrow here showing the thrust on the ball and just a tiny bit of weight pulling it down um, and we could predict from this information what direction the ball is going to accelerate obviously off up and to the right so short term uh, we're going to look at some different objects. Obviously, we can't do the whiteboard and check thing while you're at home, um, but uh, I don't think you need to do that anyway. You should know what you're doing. I'd like you to try these things. If you can't do this exact thing then try at home, then try and uh, mimic it. You can hold up any object. You can drop any object as long as it's not going to break. You can drag any object across a desk. Um, if you've got fridge magnets, this will work. Um, if not, then just try and remember what it was like to play with magnets uh, at school. And then if you haven't got a balloon, again, just try and imagine what's going to happen. I'd like you to draw these as well as you can. Uh, don't forget simple shapes, arrows that represent the direction and the size of the force, and label both the object and the forces, please. And when you're done, come back and I'll show you what I expect these to look like. OK, hopefully you've done that. So I'm going to move slide on. Uh, so uh, we start with something that's just a bit tricky, holding up the pencil case. We would have a normal reaction force. Even if that is pulling something up, it's still a normal reaction force. And we've got the weight pulling the pencil case down. Dropping the tennis ball. Well, uh, I'm assuming you're thinking that after we've dropped it, let go. So the tennis ball is moving down. It has weight. Um, and it has a little bit of drag on it as well. So we need to include that. Pulling a wooden block across a desk is harder. We've got more forces involved. But if we're pulling at a constant speed, then we've got a thrust, which is equal to the friction. They balance each other so it stays at the same speed. And we've got a normal reaction and weight as well. Pushing the magnet is going to look very, very similar. OK, the only thing we need to think about now is what we're going to name the force that pushes it. Uh, so this you, you wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily be wrong if you've written thrust. It could look exactly the same as this. But specifically, that thrust is caused by ma magnetic repulsion. So we can name it as magnetic repulsion. We're pushing it without touching it. So it's repulsion because that is a magnetic pushing force. Uh, and then the hardest one of all, the balloon, which could kind of go in any direction. I've drawn it like this. But as long as you've got um, the main thing is that we've got thrust from the uh, air that's being ejected out of the balloon. We've got drag, which must be in the opposite direction to motion. So if the thrust is the biggest one, then the drag will be in the opposite direction. and It will be smaller. And we've got a tiny bit of weight as well. So hopefully you've added that on. If you need to make any corrections, uh, if you've got your purple pens, do it in purple pen. If not, just... Uh, in whatever colour pen you've got, so you can see that it was a correction, and um, spend some time doing that now. 
Okay, just some true or false questions for you. So, electrostatic repulsion is a pushing force. True or false? True. The bigger the force, the longer the arrow. True or false? It's true. All forces occur when objects are touching. True or false? That's false. We do have non-contact forces. Force arrows show the direction the force acts. True. Forces have either magnitude or direction. That's false. They have both magnitude and direction. Some forces are edible. No, they're not. All objects on Earth have weight acting on them. That is true. Upthrust only occurs in water. That is false. Upthrust happens in any fluid. It can happen in oil, it can happen in air, it can happen in helium, it can happen in anything. Friction always acts on the opposite in the opposite direction to motion. That is true. You've got to have an object uh, moving or trying to move by some other force for there to be friction. And drag can be caused by any type of fluid. Yes, it can. So hopefully you found this, in, this uh, lesson uh, useful as a reminder about forces. Let me see those force diagrams you've done and your completed table about forces. Thank you very much.